So in this uh, video, we're going to have a look in more depth at uh, two of the Magic Lantern menus, the Live View menu and the Exposure menu. The first of the options we're going to have a look at is Zebras. That's a very useful option, um, which really assists in your exposure of your, uh, of your movies. So by default, it's off. If I switch it on now and go in, back into the main screen there, you can see there it shows hatching or Zebras kind of lines around the areas, particularly here white, which it says are overexposed. So given that information, you can then readjust your exposure, for example, to eradicate or um, to take into account the, the overexposed areas. Um, you can, if you go into zebras, you can actually also show underexposed areas as well. And by clicking the set button, for example, I want to show areas which are um, at the limit of 10% uh, underexposed. If I go in now, you might see there's also other areas have appeared in the shadows showing underexposed. That's not such a useful feature. Overexposed um, is really the one you're going to be want to um, dealing with more often than not. Uh, and it, the underexposed areas as well can cluster up your screen, in my opinion. And it's easier to recover underexposed areas uh, than it is to um, recover um, overexposed areas. So just to get rid of the underexposure there if you want, I just press, keep on pressing the go back there pressing the play button and I'll bring it back down to zero. Look at another very useful feature which I think you might find very useful which is focus peak and if I click on focus peak there you can see um, immediately an area I'll switch on the actual um, recording there so I can see a picture of it as well the area which is um, focused on has blue dots around it and if, for example, you see the background is, is not focused. If I, for example, want to focus on perhaps an item in the back, we've seen the focusing before. If I go into and try and focus on something in the background. So there's a table in the back there I've tried to focus on. And you might see there the blue, let's record that there, the, the actual blue um, dots are appearing in the area now behind the cup. So focus peaks show you a visual aid to actually show you over the whole picture what areas you have in focus. Next feature which is very useful uh, for focusing is what's called magic zoom and this allows you to keep zoomed in on an area, uh, so I'm going to switch that on now, as even you're filming. So magic zoom there and if I press the Q button there again you can see there are lots of options there to change on that and I'm going to recommend the ones I think are best. Um, are these. If you're going to use Magic Zoom, um, I think the best one, options are to have it on, always on. Um, you can always disable it in Magic Lantern, but leave it always on. I'll show you why uh, shortly. Um, size I leave as small, because it doesn't take up too much of the screen. Position northwest. Magnification 2 to 1, you can change that to 1 to 1, but I think 2 to 1 is best. And focus confirm green bars, it's the most simple. Uh, the other ones are there as well, but the green bars I find is the easiest. So. If I leave that now, it's always on, and if I actually enable it now, you can see in the top left a zoom, um, zoomed in area of the screen appears. And that's, you might be able to see right in the middle of the screen, there is a small um, uh, square, and that zoomed in area shows you the area that you're actually zoomed in on. Okay, we'll have a quick look at ghost imaging now, and this is quite a useful uh, tool in that it helps you recompose your shots. It's not some special effect, it's quite a useful tool uh, which you might use. So um, I'm just going to go back in a moment without switching it on. Um, let's say I've been recording this scene here. Um, just uh, stop recording. And let's say I'm in the interim, I've moved around, I'm looking for somewhere else to uh, compose another shot, I've been shooting something else. Etc. Now, when I come back to try and recompose that original shot, for example, it's going to be very difficult to find out exactly where I was, almost impossible. So this is where the ghost image can come in quite useful, in that what I can do here is to, um, for example, um, go into the trash can, switch on the ghost image, and what will happen when we do that, and if I come out of that now, it'll actually apply a ghost image which I've used before. If you first time you've ever used it, there won't be anything applied, but this is a ghost image I've used from another scene. Um, now, that's not much good to us, so what I'm going to do is go back into the play button here, and that's the last movie we were playing. 
see there that's what we uh, that's what we were using a moment ago so that's the actual scene I want to uh, get back again so what we have to do here is you press um, strangely enough the uh, live mode button or the um, movie mode button up here and press that just once this is once you're in ghost image that now has superimposed the image from the movie we took the original composition over the image of the scene we want to recompose again so you can see that all it's a matter of doing here is lining up the image from the scene before and there we have it I can now switch off the ghost image and now ready for recording I've got the exact exact same composition I had before and you can do this for pictures etc uh, or whatever you want to set up your scenes again so ghost image is actually a very useful tool for recomposing your shots um, and trying to remember where the shots were very very accurately Now, after Ghost Image, to be honest, I don't bother with most of these other things, deep fishing, spot meter, false colour, histogram, waveform. They may have their uses, but for most, I, I don't find they're fantastically useful. But the one thing, and perhaps the thing you will have on pretty well all the time, is the bottom one, the most useful out of all the Magic Lantern tools, which is audio meters. Um, by default, the Canon cameras in the Canon 600D don't have meters on screen, and you really do need those when you're recording uh, sound, which you're going to be doing. So if I click on... Um, if I leave that off for a moment and go back into the screen, you see there is no way of knowing. I'm going to record now. There's no way of knowing on screen. I can click through the info buttons. None of those tell me where the, uh, if it's recording sound or not, or if it's recording correctly. Um, if I go back into Magic Lantern, click on audio meters, as simple as that in the 600D. Um, go back into the main screen. Now right at the top you'll see there's two channels, left and right, for stereo left and right channels. And if I now start recording, now note, even though I'm speaking, uh, it doesn't hear me at the moment because it doesn't work. It's not picking up any sound. It's only when the record button is on. And when you see the record button on there, you can see both channels there, left and right, going um, non-stop. And you see they're in the green there, occasionally getting to the yellow, which is fine. And um, going to about minus 12 decibels, something like that. So that's a very, very useful tool when you're filming to make sure that you actually are uh, at least picking up sound on the camera so just note that and it's the same when you've got a um, headphones um, so you've got a mic attached as well you'll be able to see it on screen there so very 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 useful and i'd recommend that being on all the time that's looking at all the live view options there we've seen global draw zebras focus peak magic zoom uh, ghost image and audio meters on i think are the most useful ones if we now go to the next option along the top by clicking the arrow key there to exposure this is also some useful options here and I look at the ones I think are the most useful. So the first one is the ISO option. It's not essential, but it can be quite useful if you want the perfect, perfect image and to do it the correct way, uh, according again to cin cinematic rules. So by default, um, you might already know that the Canon gives you various ISO options. So if I come out of Magic Lantern for a second, and if I click on the ISO button, and then you can see there, you can go through from auto to 100, 200, 400, 800, 1600, 32 and 6400 which is fine this is set for 100 at the moment now you've got slightly more options with magic lantern in, in that respect because if i go back in if you see the iso if you just um, click on the set button there you can actually go all the way up by pressing q it'll set an automatic iso if you want but we don't want to do that you can see there by increments it goes up now note as you're going through that certain of them appear in green and those are what's called the uh, native um, ISO settings to the camera these are the best ISO settings you can have um, to give the least grain in your pictures and we're going to go up through them there and they're generally multiples of um, 160 um, now that's fine so you can set your ISOs like that it gives you more flexibility um, it also gives you a reminder of the uh, native ones as well. If you want to go a step further, I'll go back into that, and just have the optimum ISO settings for your camera, the native ones to the camera that give the least grain, then what you can do if you go along to something called tweaks here, uh, along the top, and go down to ISO selection. At the moment it's set for all, so all values, you can see. If you click on that, you can have it for 100 uh, or 160, those are the best 
options there. So if I select that now, and if I go back to ISO, and if I click on ISO now, you can see it immediately goes to 160. Um, if I click on it again, 320. So it's giving uh, multiples of 100 and also the multiples of 160, which are the best mate native um, ISO settings for the camera. So just know what that's about. So that's ISO. Uh, the next thing we'll have a look at is the other useful setting here um, is the shutter speed. If I click on that now. Now, why is that useful? Well, you may know that um, initially the shutter speed we set, um, we recommended, although I'm in a slightly different um, uh, film mode at the moment, I'm in not full HD, I'm in um, 720p HD. For 1080 uh, p HD, the recommended frames per, well, the recommended, the frames per second for cinematic mode are 24 frames per second, and you need a um, shutter speed of 1 48th of a second. We've seen already on the camera that this is not available in the, um, if I just go back into the Canon settings, if I move the, um, as you can see there, the shutter speed button, the dial, um, I can go from 40 to 50, but I can't get 48, I can't get 1 48th of a second, which is the recommended one when you're shooting at 24 frames per second. So what you can do, uh, luckily in uh, Magic Lantern, if you click on the, go back into it, you can actually, can actually set a shutter speed of uh, 48. In fact, you can go, you can see there, in increments, I keep on clicking. You've got a hugely wide range of shutter speeds there, and I can choose, for example, 1 48th there. And you see there as well, 1 48th, that's just uh, 180 degrees, which is a, a cinematic convention for that as well. Now, it still, it still shows 50 on the screen for the Canon, but it is actually now using 48th, 1 48th of a second um, for the... Uh, if I click on the info button there, you see 1 48th of a second for the shutter speed. One other, I think, which is actually very useful, though, which is this one, the picture style. Now, you've already seen you can change picture style anyway in the Canon main menu. I come out of that and have a look at uh, menu again. You can, if you go along the options there, you can see you can change picture style there to the various ones and you can set um, your user defined ones as well. So what's the point of this? Well, there is a very useful uh, point to this and I'll show you now what that is. So if we go back into again to Magic Lantern, now notice um, it'll obviously Magic Lantern picks up the setting for which the Canon is already set on, which is standard for picture style. But there is an, another useful option underneath, which is recording picture style. And at, by default, it's set to don't change, i.e. when you start recording, and I'll just go back in again, when I start recording button now, you might see that the picture style is um, standard picture style. It looks the same before you record as it does when you record, which is, you might think, very useful. However, um, what happens uh, is this uh, occasionally. So if I go back in now, let's say I want to actually, um, I'll come out of this for a minute, and I want to actually record in instead in one of my flat styles, all right? So I'm going to go user defined, and the Cine style is a very flat style. Um, very low contrast, very uh, little saturation in it, you can see there. Now the issue with this style is, this can actually make it very hard when you're going to record um, to see what your film might look like when it's finished. Although it's a good one to use because you can adapt it afterwards in post-production and add colours and contrast and all the rest of it afterwards and, and sharpness etc. Um, it makes it difficult, two things to do. One thing it makes it difficult to focus, because without contrast it's very difficult to focus, it's a very flat style. It also, from a visual point of view, doesn't give you a good clue as to what the film could look like or what you'd like at the end of it. So often, especially for focusing, what's recommended is that you switch to standard style uh, as you set the shot up, and then when you go to record, you, chase it, you change it back to your flat style. So what Magic Lantern allows you to do is this. It allows you to check, change um, the picture style for the recording picture style, if I click on that there, to, sorry, I go back there, to one of the other ones. So if I click on the Q button there to go into that, you can see there, um, auto standard, I click, click the set button, portrait, landscape. Now let's say when I'm recording, I want it to be perhaps um, 
my user defined style 3 which is my cine style user flat flat film style if i click on that now and i go back into magic lantern here and my picture style for the um, pre-recording just by setting up the shot i want that to be the standard one so if i click on the q button there and i want that to be standard so now you see we've got two picture styles set up. One is the standard picture style for setting the shot up, and the other one is when we record, I've got a separate, the flat picture style for uh, recording. So if I go back into the main screen now, now you see well, setting the shot up like this, it looks like the standard style. We can see color, we can focus very easily in this style, etc. Um, and when I start recording, you might see immediately the picture style changes now to the flat picture style. So that's actually quite a very useful tool. And you can have that set up always in the background. It also means you, you know, you, if you are pretty well determined to do flat picture styles, which are very useful for um, editing your color, contrast and sharpness afterwards, then um, having set up like this, it, it makes it much quicker to do and you're, you're less likely to forget to change the picture styles as you're, uh, as you're recording. So that's actually, if I go back in there, you can see it goes back to standard when it comes out of recording. So that uh, option there I think is actually a very useful one as well. Thanks very much uh, for watching, I hope you en enjoyed that. Uh, in the next video we're going to have a look at um, some more of the Magic Lantern features in more depth.